In this video, we're going to look at another application of integration, dealing with probability. So let's do a quick review. A random variable is something that describes a random outcome. And we can distinguish between two types of random variables, a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable. Discrete random variables, you can think of maybe corresponding to uh, events that have a finite number of outcomes, such as throwing two six-sided die. In fact, let's look at that. If we let our probability, or I'm sorry, our random variable, capital X, represent the sum of the numbers shown on the two dice thrown, well, we can actually make a little table that would uh, illustrate all of the possible outcomes of throwing two six-sided die. The blue numbers represent the sum of the two numbers. So this is the second die. This is the number showing on the first die. And then we're showed the sum. So we can get a four by having a one and a three or a two and a two or a three and a one. And so let me go ahead and make a little bar chart then, which graphs then the corresponding probability of this part of getting a particular sum. And so, for example, in order to get a four, a sum of four, there are three possible ways that can occur out of a total of 36. And so 3 out of 36 is going to give me 1 12th. So the probability of seeing a 4 is 1 12th. The probability of seeing a 7 is the highest at 1 6th. And of course, the probability of getting either a 2 or a 12 have the lowest at 1 out of 36. So it's pretty interesting to note that uh, if I consider this as being the graph of a step function and calculate the area under the graph, this area is going to be 1. And that should make sense. The sum of all the probabilities should equal 1. Because the probability of getting a sum between 2 and 12 is certain. And a certain probability corresponds to a probability of one that is a certain event. All right, well, what about continuous random variables? So, you know, those would correspond to things that are changing in a continuous fashion, fashion. So, like the weight of a kitten after a certain period of time. The weight doesn't jump, there's no quantum kittens. Um, and so it's just continuously changing slowly over time. Uh, the lifespan of a light bulb, right? Uh, it doesn't only last for a certain number of days or hours or minutes. It's a, any time value could be a valid lifespan. And the temperature in Pasadena, you know, again, temperature changes in a continuous fashion. So probability density functions then uh, is a function which you can use to essentially graph the probability. So it would, is the corresponding function to this step function that we had with a discrete probability or discrete random variable. And so the way we calculate the probability of a continuous random variable being between two numbers is to calculate an integral. Now, it makes sense that, again, uh, the probability that that random variable is between negative infinity and positive infinity, well, it's got to be somewhere. It's got to be somewhere. So the probability that it's between negative infinity and positive infinity has got to be 1. So one of the characteristics of a probability density function is that the value of this 
integral has to equal one. So let's look at a function here. It's piecewise defined. Um, it's only really non-zero between zero and one. And outside of the interval from zero to one, the function value is zero. So over zero to one, it is this polynomial kx squared times the quantity one minus x. What value of k will make this into a probability density function? Well, that means that if we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx, the answer should be one. But since it's zero everywhere except from zero to one, we can replace the bounds with zero and one because everywhere else the integral would evaluate to zero. So now I have a fairly simple integral. I can multiply out the uh, polynomial, use the power rule, and evaluate that from 0 to 1, and I'll get k over 12. So I want k over 12 to equal 1. So k will have to equal 12. The mean. So the mean of a probability density function uh, is just taking uh, the integral from negative infinity to infinity and now we're going to put x or multiply x times f of x inside the integrand. This should look very familiar. Uh, so our the area under our probability density function is 1. And if I looked at the x-coordinate of the centroid of the region, what would I get? Well, I would have the moment about the y-axis, which is just the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times f of x, divided by the area. But for a probability density function, that is exactly the mean. So the mean can be interpreted as the x-coordinate of the centroid of the region under the probability density function, so between the probability density function and the x-axis. So if your probability density function has a vertical line of symmetry, then you know that must be the mean. So let's go ahead and find the mean of the probability density function that we saw in example one. Again, since it's only non-zero between zero and one, our improper integral actually is a proper integral with bounds from zero to one. And then we're just going to multiply our polynomial by x. So now I have 12x cubed instead of 12x squared. Multiply that out, find the antiderivative, and evaluate it. So it's at 3 fifths. So you know, we have to be a little bit careful here. Uh, this particular function doesn't really have it. Its graph doesn't have a line of symmetry. And so uh, we may be tempted to say, oh, we're going between zero and one. The mean must be whatever happens at 0 0.5. And uh, that's not the case here. What about the median? The median is a number we expect to be in the middle, right? In the middle. If you have a finite number of uh, data points, the median data point is the point where half of the data is greater than the median and half of the data is below the median. And so what we want here is we want the area starting from m going to infinity under our probability density function to be one half. So notice that the probability then that our 
continuous random variable is greater than the median is one half, the probability that it's less than the median is one half. A common probability density function is the exponential function. Uh, and the exp an exponential probability density function, we would use this for um, a model maybe wait times when you call into a service center or, or the times between equipment failures. And uh, we should be able then to do a little bit of analysis here. So what this says is that since T represents time for most of these models, um, we want the probability density function to be zero for the negative values of T, right? So it doesn't, in, in these models, it doesn't make sense to have a negative uh, value. And um, so then the, we just have this uh, power of E representing with a, with a negative exponent. So remember in our hockey stick model, this is going to have the handle going up on the left and then the flat part is going out towards the right. So let's look at this a little bit more carefully. So since we know that the uh, area under the entire curve has to equal one and it's zero for all the negative values, I can just evaluate from zero or take the integral from zero to infinity of just the exponential term for the positive values of t. And that's going to have to equal one. So let's evaluate this integral. It's an improper integral, so I'll replace the uh, infinity with a parameter. T is already used, so I'm going to use alpha for my parameter. And then I'll evaluate this integral. I just need to uh, take into account that I have a negative C, so that will, and the exponent. So I didn't write out all the formal steps of a U substitution, but a U substitution would lead to the antiderivative being negative A over C times E to the power of negative CT. And evaluate that between zero and alpha. And I get the following expression. I have a multiplier negative A over C times one over E to the C alpha minus one. Um, I'm always afraid I'll drop this negative sign. So I'm going to rewrite this with a positive A over C and then take the opposite inside the bracket. So now I have one minus one over E to the C alpha. So now we're going to let uh, alpha go to infinity, take that limit. Uh, so one over E to the C alpha is just going to go to zero and I'll be left with A over C. Now remember, this has to equal one. And since that equals one, that means that A has to equal C. So in our model, originally it looks like I have two constants, but because it's a probability density function, those constants are actually equal to each other. So let's make use of this model in a light bulb problem. Now, I don't know what your experience is, but when I go out and purchase a light bulb, it has some sort of lifespan printed on it. And I'm pretty sure that that represents the, when you say average, that they actually mean uh, the mean of the probability density function. Uh, and so if it says, okay, you, this light bulb is rated for a thousand hours. Well, let's find an exponential density function which models that lifespan. Um, then we're going to find the probability that a bulb fails after 200 hours and the probability that a bulb lasts more than 800 hours. 
and we'll find the median lifespan of the bulb and see how that compares to the advertised average, which is probably the mean. So part A is going to take most of our time. Now notice that we've replaced the capital A with just our lowercase c. So we have the same constant in the exponent and the same constant multiplier. And we're going to assume that this average represents the mean. And so the mean, remember the formula is the integral from negative infinity of t times f of t dt. So in order to find this constant c, I'm going to have to use the formula for the mean and use that to determine the value of c. So let's go ahead and replace the infinity with alpha and try to calculate this integral to get a formula for c, which we could then set equal to 1,000. I'm going to have to use integration by parts. So I'll let u equal ct and then du equal c dt. And dv would be e to the negative ct. So the antiderivative would be negative 1 over c e to the negative ct. So I'll put that into uv minus integral v du. Bounds are going to be from 0 to alpha. Now I can find the antiderivative of e to the negative ct. That's going to be negative 1 over c, e to the negative ct. And then I'll do the evaluation for both terms together. So I get three terms, alpha over e to the c alpha, minus 1 over c times e to the c alpha, plus 1 over c. And so now I'm going to let alpha go to infinity. And when I let alpha go to infinity, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I don't want to have that quite yet. There's quite a few steps before I get to that. So I'm going to take the limit as alpha goes to infinity. I've got three terms. Now, the middle term is pretty clear. Um, 1 over e to the alpha as alpha goes to infinity, that's going to go to 0. The constant term, it's also pretty clear. Limit of constant is just the constant. So it's only this term where I have alpha in the numerator and the denominator. I need to calculate that. So 1 plus c, I can bring out in front, plus the limit as alpha goes to infinity of alpha over e to the c alpha. Well, I can use L'Hopital's rule. Let me go ahead and take the derivative with respect to alpha of the top and the bottom. And so the derivative of alpha will just be 1. The derivative of e to the c alpha made a mistake there. I need to use the chain rule, but I need to use the chain rule correctly. V that should say C times E to the C alpha. There we go. Now let alpha go to infinity. Uh, and I'll just get zero. So let me go ahead and make that correction once again. Let me be careful with it. So this limit went to zero, so I'm only left with the one over C. And so, Now I'll set that 1 over c equal to 1,000, which means c is 1 over 1,000, or 0 0.001. 
and now I've got my model. It's going to be 0.001e to the negative 0.0012 for positive t and 0 for other y. So that's part A. And that was really the hard part. Um, still have to do some work with part B, C, and D. But in, now that I've got my model, if I want to find the probability that the ball fails after 200 hours, that means that the lifespan, remember, we're trying to, the X represents the lifespan, uh, is less than or equal to 200. So I need to go ahead and, and integrate from 0 to 200. So I just have some finite bounds here. I'll go ahead and plug in my formula for f of t. Find the antiderivative. It's nice that uh, this constant negative 0 0.01 uh, comes out uh, into the denominator. And so it divides out with the 0 0.001 in front. And so then I just have to evaluate that. And as a decimal approximation, then, uh, it is about 0.18, so 18%. So, you know, almost one in five bulbs you would expect to fail. Uh, you know, out, after 200 hours or before, right? I have to be a little bit more careful there after really what I should have said here is after no more than 200 hours. All right. What about the probability that the bulb lasts more than 800 hours? So then and my lower bound is 800. The upper bound is, is infinity, so I have an improper integral to evaluate. So I'll go ahead and replace the infinity with alpha. Find its antiderivative, uh, and then evaluate it with the bounds 800 to alpha. I'll get a formula and alpha. Uh, but as alpha goes to infinity, this term 1 over e to the power of 0 0.001 alpha, that's going to go to 0. And I'm left with e to the power of negative 0 0.8. And so the probability that it lasts more than 800 hours is only 45%. So not even half of them, not even half of the bulbs, uh, would be expected to last more than 800 hours. I guess that's one way you can interpret it. Uh, but you don't even have a better than 50-50 chance that you, ball, you buy a 1,000 hour light bulb, but you don't even have a better than 50-50 chance that it's gonna last more than 800 hours. So what is the median? Well, remember, the median is going to be that number m, which when as a lower bound, if I take the, the integral from m to infinity of f of t dt, I should get 1 half. So let's go ahead and find the antiderivative of that, evaluate it between m and alpha, because I've got an improper integral. So the second term, 1 over e to the 0 0.001 alpha, if I let alpha go to infinity, that term is going to go to 0. So I'm left with e to the negative 0 0.001m. That's got to equal 1 half. So I get a little equation. I'll rewrite that in log form. I'll solve for m. Um, to, before I do that, I'm going to use a log property to avoid having the negative sign. And so m would be natural log of 2 over 0 0.001. And I can see that I put in an extra 0 here.
correct that true. If I have the right numbers, just the decimal point in the wrong location. Okay, so dividing by 0 0.001 is the same as multiplying by a thousand. And as a decimal approximation, that says 693 hours. So you have a 50 50 chance if you buy a light bulb rated for 1,000 hours that it's going to last 693 hours. Now, this goes against our, our intuition, or certainly in you know the data sets that we will have studied in a basic uh, statistics class or even going back to elementary school looking at the mean and the median generally we expected the mean and the median to be close to each other well it really depends on this probability density function in this case we know that <clears throat> if you look at an exponential function with a negative uh, uh, exponent that we have that hockey stick shape where the as you go further to the right it gets flatter and flatter and so if we're talking about area we would expect most of the area to be bunched up near the left side of the graph and so our median is going to be much further to the left than the uh, than the um, mean with this type of probability distribution. Most of the data that we encounter is in a symmetric distribution, like a normal distribution. So the normal distribution, this is where we have this e to the negative x squared type formula for it. What it's very complicated. Uh, the mu in this formula is the mean of the probability density function. And so um, this is symmetric about its, its mean. Uh, sigma is the standard deviation. And in this case, the median is the same as the mean.